So let's get straight in. The first chord is G minor seven. This is the two chord of a two, five, one. And the melody note starts on an A. So which scale degree is A when played over G? That's the ninth. So which chord voicing could we use that has the ninth as its top note? Well, the rootless chord voicings are great for this. You'd find the minor third, build a major seven chord, B flat to major seven. This would be an ideal voicing for this situation. The next chord is C dominant seven. The melody note is A. So which scale degree is A from C? Well, it's easy when it's from C, but it's the major sixth. So this is a dominant seven chord, which means I want to use an upper structure voicing. So root third seventh in my left hand, that's already taken care of. Which triad could I play in my right hand? Well, there's a few options. I could play the D major triad, that would be nice. Or I could do the A major triad, although I'd have to invert it so that the top note would be A. So I'll take these two notes down. And I actually like this more. My ear prefers this. This has a flat nine instead of the D major, which would have a sharp 11. So I'm liking this flat nine, so I'm gonna go with this. Next, we have an F major seven chord. The melody note is G. Which scale degree is G over F? Well, it's the ninth, just a whole step up. Well, that again is a good situation for a rootless voicing, position A. So which notes am I going to play? Well, F major seven, find the third. It's a major third, two whole steps, and then build a minor seven chord, A minor seven. That's my voicing. Next we have a D minor seven chord. The melody note is G, which scale degree is G to D. Well, that is a fourth. So this is the fourth slash 11th. Both numbers mean the same note. So which voicing shall I use for this? Well, we have the Kenny Barron chord voicing, which is ideal for this situation if you can reach it. So that's going to be a stack of fifths in the left hand from the root. Find the chords minor third, which is upper half step, and then another stack of fifths. So this is going to work. If you can't stretch this voicing though, then I suggest you use this voicing for D minor 11. I'll just demonstrate it from C though to begin with. So C minor 11 would be this. It's just a literal chord voicing for C minor 11. So if you can't stretch the Kenny Barron voicing, you could play it like this. And that sounds really nice. Little thing I like to do is side slipping. You can take the whole chord, move it up with the melody and back. So you play a D minor 11, E minor 11, D minor 11. It's called side slipping. Next we have a G minor seven, but this time the melody note is C, which scale degree is C. From G, it is the fourth or the 11th. So which chord voicing shall I use? Well, again, I could use the Kenny Barron chord voicing for this. It's gonna give me the top note as the melody note. That sounds great if you can reach it. If you can't, what's the other voicing I showed you? We'll just play a literal voicing for G minor 11. Build G minor seven, add the ninth, and add the 11th. So both work really well. And nearly done with the A section here, C dominant seven. And we have E flat in the melody note. Which scale degree is E flat? Well, you might have said it's the minor third, which is correct, but to be correct with the chord type, which is a dominant seven chord, we're going to call it a sharp nine, because this chord has a major third already. So this is a dominant seven chord. Let's use an upper structure. Which upper structure shall we use? There's a few we could use. There's E flat major. 
I think I like E flat major for this. And I'm actually going to double the octave, which you can do with upper structures. Sounds very nice. And then we have an F major 7 chord to end. The melody note is the fifth. Which voicing shall I play? Well, when the melody note is the fifth, we always have that rootless voicing, position B, as an option. So F, we're going to find the major seventh, find the ninth, major third, and fifth. That's always an option. That sounds nice. I think I'm actually going to just play a literal voicing though, because it sounded nice just then. There's no right or wrong answer, both work, but since we've been playing so many complex chords, it would be nice to create some contrast and just play a literal voicing here. So we've got a really nice variety of voicings here. We've got rootless chord voicings, we've got upper structures, like this, we've got the Kenny Barron 11th voicing, And we have a simple literal chord voicing to end. And to end, let's just listen to our arrangement one more time. Now, if you want to learn more jazz piano chord voicings, I've actually written a free ebook for you. It's called The Chord Voicing Guide. You can download it for free at the link below.